I'm Chris Gardner. And joining me is, I'm going to be funny with her because she's the sister of the new head coach of the Houston Rockets, Emi Udoka. Mfon Udoka. Did I pronounce that right? It's more like, mm, like, mm, mm, or, mm, fun, Udoka. Yes, yes. Okay. Perfect. So Rocket fans, now you know when you see your Rocket games this season, you know how to pronounce <laughs> your name and say, there's Coach's sister. So there you go. How are you? I'm great. I'm doing well. Uh, it's been a while since I've paid attention to Houston. I'm not going to lie, but um, now I have a whole new reason to. You do. And first off, I think the Warriors in the process of finishing the Kings. So my pick of Kings in seven will be wrong, but oh, well, no money was involved. So whatsoever. Anyhow, but more importantly, your brother is the head coach of the Houston Rockets. How does that feel? How does it sound to you? Um, it's amazing. And I'm so excited. We're thrilled. Um, I think just with what he was able to do in the year he was with, with Boston and the youth and the talent in the cap space and a, a destination that players want to play at, um, he'll be able to put his stamp on there and I think get these young kids going in the right direction with uh, some tough love, um, some high expectations, discipline, defense, and just overall toughness. What's the difference in age between you and him? We're a year apart. I'm a year and two months older. Does he lean on you for advice? I wouldn't say he leaned on me for advice, but we do talk a lot. Um, I'm not into all of the, I think, things behind the scenes that I just kind of see the surface stuff. Um, but yeah, we talk a lot. Um, and I'm just excited just in general, regardless. Um, it feels a lot better to actually cheer for a team when you know somebody. Um and obviously, now I have a big reason to. Uh, when the Rockets announced they were moving in another direction from Steven Silas, your brother was mentioned as one of the top candidates. Did he speak to you about, hey, what do you think about Houston? What do you know about Houston? Because you did play for the Comets 20 years ago. That's how I first met. We first met. But did mm -hmm. he ask you any advice about the city of Houston or anything like that? Not really, because he's been in San Antonio for so long and um, has, you know, played in the NBA. So he's been to Houston. I think it's changed a lot since I played there. Um, but I think if you've lived in Texas, you kind of know what Texas is like. Uh, we just know that um, Houston is the biggest city, um, has a ton of Nigerians mm -hmm. and um, is a comes from a winning culture, just the sports in general with the baseball team last year. I mean, the Rockets have championships, so it's not a place where there are low expectations. I don't think regardless of whatever is going on with the uh, last few seasons or whatever, um, you're still expected to win. And now I think again with, like I said, with the youth and excitement and needing someone to kind of mold them and to sh put them in the right direction, I think he is perfect for that. Describe your basketball career from high school to when you finished. Are you still okay. playing? I don't even know that. Are you still playing? Oh, God, no. Um, <laughs> your girl over here can barely walk. Uh, <laughs> but um, no, I went to uh, Benson High School in Portland, Oregon. Um, not the same high school as Ime. Ime actually went to a rival high school uh, of our of mine. What was that and, like? Um, you know, for the boys' side, it's different. Uh, for the girls' We uh, we were always better. Um, my high school is pretty much always better than his, but he had some pretty good rivalries back in the day um, with Benson High School. He went to Jefferson. Um, but then I went to DePaul University from 1994 to 98. Um, made the Detroit Shock really quick, got cut really early. Then I tore my ACL, went overseas um, to Portugal and Israel and China before I got back in the WNBA. Um, the same year I played in Houston was the same year I, my first year with the Nigerian national team. And after the season was Houston was over, I like left like two weeks after and went to Nigeria for the first time, um, to compete in a couple tournaments and eventually won the Olympic berth to go play in Athens in 2004. Um, then I kind of 
was in LA for a little bit and then mostly overseas after that in um, Russia, South Korea, Turkey, France. And I think that's about it. It's kind of hard to remember, but there were played for about nine different countries um, in nine different leagues and then did a lot with Nigeria as well, where we played in the Olympics and um, also the what they called world championships back then in 2006 in Brazil. Do you have a favorite country playing overseas? I did. I actually, I loved playing in Turkey the most. It was, um, they let you play more physical and I was always kind of a physical bruiser kind of player. And um, the climate was nice. The people were cool. The food was good. And I also liked um, Israel as well. It was, it was similar to that um, where you just didn't really feel like you were in a complete foreign country where no one's speaking your language or you can't find something um, that reminds you of home a little bit. Um, so I'd say some, for some reason, the Mediterranean countries, um, were my favorite. Uh, your time with the Comets, Van Chancellor was the head coach. And if I remember right, he could not pronounce your name. No, <laughs> he couldn't. <laughs> uh, he, he couldn't pronounce a few people's names. So he'd love to give us nicknames. And I think he ended up going with the Fonz for me after a while. He just started calling me Fonz. <laughs> <laughs> what do you remember about your time your one year with the comics one year right one season with the comics yeah what, what was it like for you um it was you know a goal setting um a goal accomplished goal of mine and i was really excited to um you know just be around all of that greatness that was there at the time um, cynthia wasn't there she was around and she was there early um so i did get to see her but not for very long but cheryl and tina um amazing players some of the best to ever play um, Michelle Snow, Tiffany Johnson, Dominique Canty, um, Wendy, the strength coach. Um, I remember her a lot because I spent a lot of time with her. Um, when I got there, of course, my expectation is to play, right? I mean, that's what everybody wants to do. Um, so there were some injuries early on in the season where I actually got to start some games and mm -hmm. actually play some reasonable minutes. And I was hoping that would, you know, um, be the case even after they came back. And that wasn't. So it gave me, a, for the first time, a different outlook on how to be a different type of teammate. So now I'm not um, like a starter or whatever, but we, I saw the value now in being on the team that gets the starters ready. So we had to push them and go, uh, go at them pretty hard and then know what the other team was going to do and get them ready. And then I also think um, just being around – those players and um like i said learning a different side of the game and then spending a lot of time with wendy i was in like the best shape of my life and i really think that that prepared me to go to nigeria to win and do those things that we needed to do to get to the olympics um when i showed up in nigeria we won three tournaments in a row that had never been won before mm -hmm. and so i when i look back at that i think you know that's what prepared me and um, gave me a different perspective on, you know, being on the bench because I'd always been, you know, a starter or someone who played a lot. Um, and of course that's not like, you know, it's not what you want to do, but um, when you're a part of a team, you just have to do what's best for the team. And I still look back at it very fondly. And again, I think it really just played a big part in me um, going to Nigeria and getting us to the Olympics. And Cheryl was at, the uh, press conference uh, Wednesday to introducing your, your brother as head coach. Do you still talk to her, keep in touch with her? Uh, we do every now and then, you know, more, more so, um, you know, social media, you can kind of see people quote unquote, see people. Um, but I, I think she would be around and I, I imagine I will run into her uh, when I get down to Houston sometime. Now I, I have not stalked you. But I did ask you if you're going to be at some Rocket Games. You said yes. Have you thought about how many home games you'll be at? No, I haven't. But I will definitely be at the you know home opener. And maybe if it's a couple that you can catch really uh, back to back or in a few days from each other. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, the regular season is not as interesting. Um, but when we make the playoffs... I'll be there. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's the expectation. I mean, okay, right. Let's be have, honest. Like, have you, have you talked to Ime since he was, was head coach just about 
what his emotions are, his thoughts about being head coach of the Rockets. Yeah, I was actually in L.A. Um, when he, you know, got the call and was hired. So we did um, talk a little bit. And I think, like, again, it's just it goes back to um, the young talent you have, the chance you have to put your imprint on someone or and, and a team and the challenge of, you know, making it a better season than it's been in the past. And I don't think, um, you know, there are any low expectations. I know he's not coming in thinking, oh, well, you know, we're not going to make the playoffs or we're not going to be good. I mean, there's no, you know, that's a low expectation. He he doesn't really operate that way. Um, and no one else should think that way regardless. Um, but like he said, youth is not an excuse. Um, you know, if you've been in the NBA or you're a player, you know what the game is. And now it's time to, you know, do the things that you need to do to win. And I think uh, with he has this really great way. And I, I feel like it's he got that from our mom hmm. uh, of knowing how to communicate with people. And um, our mother was, you know, a very uh, angelic person and she knew how to talk to us and she told us all these you know wonderful things and growing up and that's what I remember about her but I think he gets the toughness side from our Nigerian side where you're very blunt very to the point it's not really personal it's just the truth and um, sometimes players aren't used to hearing that but they need to hear that and I think that's what was so great about his time in Boston was that he was very direct. He was very to the point and it took a minute for everybody to buy in. But once they did, they were just rolling and I, I don't see it being any different in Houston. When did you kind of get a sense that he wanted to be a coach and be good at it? He told me um, when he was playing that a few different players and coaches had said he'd be a great coach because he wasn't a star by any means, um, but people listened to him. And whenever he had something to say, you know, people listened. And again, I think it goes back to just being a great communicator, um, knowing how to talk to people, knowing how to get the best out of people, and then, um, you know, spending time with Pop and learning kind of from, you know, the goat of, of coaches. And it's more than just basketball. It's, it's very relationship based and it's how you treat people and you get to know your players. It's not just on the court stuff that matters. Um, so when he was going back and forth of whether he was going to play another year or not, cause he had just finished a year in Spain. It was kind of one of those things that was perfect timing. Um, Pop came to him and asked him if he wanted to coach and he had to choose, you know, was he going to go overseas again or stop? And it just ended up being the perfect timing for him to just transition and the perfect place. Growing up, who was a better player in one-on-one, you or him? Um, you know what? We didn't play a lot of one-on-one. -on -one. Um, my I have an older brother. We're all a year apart. Um, he and my other brother, James, used to play a lot um, in the playgrounds. He and I just kind of worked out together as we got older. But I will say in our house, I was by far the most successful athlete. <laughs> Do tell. Elaborate. Well, I was um, always in the newspapers. Um, Ime was, a, and I was a late bloomer too, but Ime was a, a later, later bloomer. <laughs> And um, I was kind of always our a go-to player, um, a leading scorer, rebounder kind of person. And he was more of a kind of jack of all trades, but master of none. He did a little bit of everything well. Um, he was shorter than people. So he did get to play the guard, all positions, actually guard forward and maybe center at one point. Uh, whereas I was always just a post player because um, I was always the tallest. Mm -hmm. So he was... Um, always a well-rounded player. I was more of a physical, like Barkley type bruiser. Um, but he got, you know, greater later and uh, he worked really hard and overcame a lot of obstacles as did I. I had, I had an injury or two I had to overcome, but yeah, in our house, I was definitely the best athlete. <laughs> and he will agree with that when we ask him. Yeah. He would say that for sure. By far. No shame in it. I mean, look at him now, like what it doesn't really matter, but I'd like to say I, I maybe set the pace. Excellent. Do you keep up with the WNBA, WBA at all? 
Yeah, I do. Um, I watch it when, when I can. Um, I definitely watch the playoffs and it's so much more competitive now than it's ever been. Um, you see all of these great players that aren't on rosters just because there's, you know, not as many teams or whatever, but, um, yeah, I think it's, it's still definitely, um, a game to watch even regardless of what people say about it, negative or whatever. Um, it's still the best of the best talent in in the world. Would you like to see the city of Portland get a WNBA team? They actually had one a while back, and they're actually circling back around, I think, a few months back um, and have started to um, try to bring a team back again. So I think it's in the works. I don't know um, how far along it is or what the requirements are, but it, it's been talked about in Portland, yes. Or would you like to see the city of Houston get a WNBA team? You know, yes, I would I would love to see Houston have one again, but if they're not going to have one, what I would like to see, and I don't know if this is the case or not, but there should definitely be um, somewhere honoring those teams. Um, I don't know if it's in the Toyota centers, if you can even see a glimpse of anything that uh, those four championships and the history of the Comets, um, but they definitely should be recognized. Um, in the city of Houston somewhere, some way. Agreed. And, and even I think the WNBA does a poor job acknowledging the Comets, the first dynasty of the entire league in existence. Yeah. yeah um, I was watching, I think I was maybe watching a, a reel or something about the current WNBA players talking about like who the greatest players were ever, like the GOAT or whoever. And mm -hmm. none of them said anybody prior to like, you know, 10 years ago. Yeah. And I was like, Ooh, that's kind of sad that, you know, they don't even know who these players are. Or maybe they do. And they just don't understand like how good these women were. But yeah, I, I agree. It, it should definitely always be the comments should always be discussed in all of the WNBA history because no one did what they did. Are you a coach now? What are you doing right now? I'm not. A, I was coaching some high school um, freshmen. I can't. Uh, I can't take the pressure of what it is to be a coach. It. I don't understand like how he can be so calm on the sidelines because sometimes for me, I'm watching and I'm like losing my mind. Um, so I was a teacher for the last four years, and it was in in Texas actually in Plano, Plano, Texas, um, and got to coach some really fun freshmen and actually be a part of uh, the Plano East girls basketball team, which were actually pretty good too. So I still like being around it. I don't have to be in it. Um, and I actually enjoy more being a fan almost now um, again, than needing to be like an actual part of it. Do you still have a relationship with the national team? Um, here and there, yes. I haven't, um, with, you know, Nigeria is always going through something. Um, so within the last two years, they had a ban and um, the Federation, for whatever reason, thought it was a good idea to not go to the World Championships after, or the World Cup, they call it now, um, after, you know, they had worked so hard to qualify. So it's always something that's around. You just, the leadership is always questionable. And um, I still do keep tabs on it a little bit, but right now they're just kind of stagnant and I don't know what they're doing as far as the band goes, but um, Nigeria always has is issues, unfortunately. And um, it would be nice one of these years to see uh, Nigeria do something correctly as far as it goes with basketball and planning and just not messing everything up. Fair. We could talk about that another time. <laughs> Long story. I mean, you, I mean, you could probably go back 50 years and you'd be saying the same thing. So for, is there one thing that uh fan rocket fans you think would want to know about your brother that they don't know so far? I would say what you see is kind of what you get with him. Um, he's very humble and very um, 
simple, uh, regardless of his stature. Like he doesn't do anything extravagant or he doesn't, you know, go out of his way to be, um, you know, boisterous or any bigger than he is, even though he has that job title. Um, and he's also a lifer. He's a basketball lifer. I mean, this is what he does. This is what he eats, sleeps, lives, breathes. Um, so you're going to get someone who's very dedicated to his job and is really um, up for the challenge to change the culture and, you know, get, get back to winning. And I don't think anybody will be disappointed with him. Um, and I think once the buy-in starts and the players start to understand and get what he's trying to do, I think they'll love their team even more because I know Rockets fans love their teams regardless. Um, but I think it's just a really exciting time. Um, you've got a great person who is, you know, ready to hit the ground running and with all of the potential, um, it's going to be a really fun season and seasons to come. I did a, I did a poll last night, uh, Saturday night, asking the Rocket fans if they thought the hire was a good hire. It was unanimous. Yeah. 100%. No, no one said no, no negative, nothing. How does it make you feel that the fans think that highly of your brother coaching their team? Well, it shows me that they know basketball. And like I said, Houston is one of those places that has a great sport, sports culture. So I love that they understand the game of basketball. Um, it's a great hire. He's someone that you would want um, coaching your kids, um, coaching your players, because he's coached um, high school kids and had a great impact with that. So he's just really good. He's a really good human being. Um really smart, really dedicated, uh, really tough, very cutthroat, but in a good way. And um, he's not coming in here saying, you know, the playoffs are one to two, three years away. I mean, we're, we're trying to make the playoffs next year and we will make the playoffs next year. So that's what, that's what we're looking at. And I know that if everybody's, you know, a little patient, I don't think everything is going to be uh, beautiful at the beginning but again, it takes a little bit of time to buy in and get your um, system put in and whatever else that you want to do on the court. So that takes a minute. So be a little patient. Um, but no one's expecting mediocrity. I mean, we're expecting playoffs and eventually championship. Does he, is he flexible? You know, he's not one of the, I don't, from say from afar, he's not one of the coaches that is trying to like pound the nail when it's not working, we're going to stick with this regardless, <laughs> you know, yeah. he's willing to change, right? Yeah. I'd say he's flexible and he's, that's what your assistants are for. Um, he's not a my way or the highway kind of guy. I think he wants to empower his assistants because he was empowered as a coach under pop. Um, and, you know, he, he was able to have a great relationship with his players where I think if they come up to him and say, Hey, let's, can we try this or this isn't working or whoever, or whatever it is, players or staff, um, he's open to listening to that because that's, that's the best way that things work. It's not a one man show. It's a collective collaborative effort on everybody on the staff, um, players. So you want to have that type of relationship with your coach where you can go up to them and talk to them and not be, you know, afraid of, whatever being shot down or ridiculed or whatever. So no, he's, he's great that way. Thank you very much, ma'am. That's yeah. all I needed. Mm -hmm. This was great. It was fun talking to you 20 years ago. It's yeah. fun talking to you now, 20 years later. So you said the home opener, you'd be definitely, the definitely be there. Um, and uh, you know, once the schedule comes out and looking around and hopefully I hope there will be like at least a couple home games in a row that I can catch. Yeah, for sure. But if not, um, when, you know, it gets colder up north and it's not as pleasant weather-wise, that's a great way uh, for me to get down back down to Texas and um, maybe hopefully wear some shorts in January kind of thing. Well, it might for a day, you know, because yeah. Houston weather changes like every other day. But honestly, a lot of cities are like that. We, you know, folks kind of claim it as their own for their city, but it, cities weather changes almost everywhere. Yeah, especially, especially yeah. <laughs> so. yeah, you guys probably got some snow recently too, right? Like that probably never happened in a long time. We get ice. Yeah. <laughs> you know? right. So, yeah. Right. Fun Udoka. Thank you, ma'am. I really You're appreciate welcome. this. And we will keep in touch. I promise not to be a pest. 
But thank you very much <laughs> for taking time and talk to me. And Ralph Cooper says hi as well. So tell him hello. Go Rockets. I'm so excited for the season and you guys should be too. Thank you. You take care. You're welcome. Bye. Bye-bye.